Well, uh, this is our second lecture on demographic models. Previous lecture, I said that there are some questions in population studies in particular and in sociology in general, which can better be answered by building certain mathematical statistical models and which cannot be answered uh, simply on the basis of primary or secondary data. One example I gave was the example of estimating how many people have ever walked on this planet earth. Now, this is a question which you cannot answer on the basis of survey and I said that roughly it can be estimated that around 120 or 130 billion people have ever been born on this planet earth of which uh, nearly 7 billion are present. Similarly, there was a question on that if there are cultural variations in stopping rules that in different cultures you find people want different number of sons and daughters then can we calculate what will be the sex ratio of population under different stopping rules. That, that is again a question which cannot be answered on the basis of survey, but if we know little bit of mathematics we can answer that question easily. But today we will talk more about demographic models. To recapitulate what are mathematical and statistical models? Mathematical and statistical models are expressions of relationships between variables describing some major chosen aspects of a phenomenon. In population studies, they are often used to explore relationship between different components of demographic systems and to explore relationship between demographic variables and socio-economic and cultural variables. You know the way I defined model, I said that model is a simple representation of reality. Now, you cannot represent reality in totality, so you choose a specific aspect of reality. Representation of that specific aspect of reality with the help of language, diagram, mathematical equation, statistical equations is what modeling means. So, mathematical and statistical models are mathematical equations or statistical equations or distributions in terms of which a chosen specific aspect of reality is represented. If you choose to represent only one simple aspect of reality, you have a simple model and if you want to uh, represent various aspects of reality, then you have a complex model and more you move from hypothetical simple case to a more realistic representation of reality, then you are moving from simple to complex model. So, in case of demography for example, if you write in a mathematical form a relationship between birth and death rate, suppose it can be shown that birth rate is a function of death rate, then you have a mathematical model. If you write a relation mathematical relationship between birth rate and socio-economic variables, then you have a, an economic demographic model and this can be done by using mathematical equations or statistical distributions uh, in terms of probabilities. Mathematical models are expressions of real world relationships expressed in mathematical form of any kind. Exponential growth model of population which is usually written as p t equal to p 0 e raise to power r t where p t is population of a country or a region at time t, p 0 is population in the base year, r is the rate of growth and t is the time between 0 and t. Uh, this is an example of a simple mathematical model which states that population growth follows the exponential model. There are so many mathematics, there will be actually innumerable curves which can be used for depicting growth of a population. Simple cases, we are interested in simple algebraic equations with help of which workable, feasible, uh, useful estimates of population can be made and in case of discrete distributions, geometric, in case of continuous, exponential are two simple models. Quite often population growth is represented with the help of simple exponential model p t equal to p 0 
e raise power r t. This is a mathematical model. It is mathematical, it is not statistical. With the help of this model, we cannot tell. Like if you know the population of India in 2001 and you want to estimate population of India in 2010, you will have one simple single estimate of that. P0 will be population of the base year means 2001, T will be the time elapsed uh, between 1st April 2001 and the date for which you want the estimate. R is the rate of growth which can be obtained from previous decadal growth rates or uh, uh, from sample registration scheme or you take a more thoughtful uh, decision, a more considered view of growth rate of the country during this time. You may say that the decadal growth rate of the previous decade has been reduced by 30 percent or 40 percent or that uh, you can say that you will take average of decadal growth rate and natural growth rate obtained from sample registration scheme. This will be a point estimate, but we know that uh, nobody can predict exactly what is the size of India's population today can we describe size of population of India today in terms of probabilities like can I say that the probability that the size of population of India is less than 1 billion is 0, between 1 billion and 1.1 billion it is 0 0.2, between 1.1 billion and 1.3 billion it is 0 0.7 like that. If I do so and describe what is likely to be the size of India's population today in terms of probabilities and ranges of size, then I have a statistical model. That is the difference between mathematical and statistical model. Mathematical models are deterministic and statistical models uh, can take care of stochastic or random uh, fluctuations. Statistical models have been developed for studying growth of population as a stochastic process. Wherever we have stochastic process, means time dependent process, uh, uncertain events that is a process which can be described only in terms of probability distributions. Thus, statistical models are closer to reality. Uh, I tell in uh, my class always that social reality can never be described in realistic terms. You can there is no social reality. I, at least I am not familiar with any uh, aspect of society which can be really described in deterministic terms. All the social phenomena uh, we encounter in our daily life are all probabilistic. We can only talk in terms of chance like whether this lecture will end today at exactly 5 or 510 or 515, it is a matter of chance. Everything is subject to chance. That means, uh, usefulness of a statistical model will be much more in description of sociological variables than the usefulness of mathematical models. So, statistical models are particularly suited for the studies of random errors. Models using probability distributions, Monte Carlo computer simulation because of their reliance on repeated computation of random or pseudo random numbers, regression analysis, discriminant analysis, factor analysis, they are all examples of statistical models. I think uh, most of you are not familiar with some of these terms, uh, Monte Carlo simulation or regress analysis or factor analysis. Maybe in a different class on statistics, the, uh, you can come to know about them. Uh, in Monte Carlo simulation, we take uh, a person randomly and using certain assumptions trace out all the relevant events that are possible in its life. That way, we go uh, for second person, third person and generate random events and on the basis of experiences of a selected number of persons then aggregate statistics are obtained. And uh, with, with the help of those statistics then we try to draw inferences about connections between different variables. History of model. One of the earliest and most forceful argument in favor of modeling was given by Nathan Kiefitz. In the last lecture I took his name Nathan Kiefitz a well known demographer. In the first volume of population and development review, everybody is familiar with the journal population and development review, one of the most read journals dealing with sociological aspects of population trends. In the very first issue 
of that journal in 1975, Kefitz published an article with the title, How do we know the facts of demography? He argued that the empirical relationships based on regression analysis can be misleading as they depend heavily on the cases for which data are available. Also without modeling, questions regarding cause and effect, multiple causation and nature of relationships could not be answered. You know what he is trying to say that if you have a regression analysis, a relationship between two variables, one of them may be called dependent variable, another independent variable like dependent variable may be growth rate of population and independent variable may be birth rate and you run a regression analysis between them, regress growth rate on birth rate using a equation that growth rate equal to A plus B into birth rate plus some error term and on the basis of empirical data from a number of countries estimate the values of A and B. Then you have found a relationship between growth rate and birth rate that may be called empirical relationship. The problem with empirical relationship is that what the values of A and B in your regression analysis would be depends on how many countries you have included, which countries you have included. Regression analysis of growth rate on birth rate will give you one set of values of A and B if you run this regression for developing countries and another set of values if you run this regression for developed countries. If you have a mixture then uh, you are going to have another set of A and B. Then which values of A and B really describe the relationship between growth rate and birth rate cannot be said on empirical basis. So, to understand if there is a real link between the two you have to depend on model. So, Nathan Kifitz argued that for this was Nathan Kifitz example growth rate and birth rate kind or the relationship between uh, age structure may be proportion of population at age uh, 60 or 65 or more and birth rate of the country. Again you can have empirical relationships, but those empirical relationships are not universal. They depend heavily on which countries you have included in the analysis, whether they are socio-economically advanced or less advanced or just developing, what is demographic profile, uh, at what stage of transition their populations are so many factors and therefore, we need to build models uh, in terms of which such relationships can be studied. In this article he showed that the empirical relationship between percent aged 65 and over and growth rate of population was dependent on number of countries for which data are available homogeneity among the countries, whether all the countries are similar or different. In such situations, analytical and mathematical models can provide a better understanding of the relationship. This is what he argued. One of such uh, models in demography, one of the most used, most talked about model in demographic studies is the model of a stable population. This stable population model is a mathematical model that shows the relationship between proportions of population at different ages and fertility and mortality. In developing this model, it is assumed all models are based on certain assumptions. Building this model, it is assumed that fertility and mortality rates are constant. Actually, long back it was observed by a demographer that if you take a population and subject it to a given schedule of fertility and mortality rates, then after a certain period of time, its age distribution becomes stationary kind of. There is no further change in the age distribution of population. That age distribution of population was taken to be the limiting case of the stable population with given schedules of fertility and mortality. Other assumptions are that the whole population consists of one sex. Now, you will say how is it possible? No population consists of one sex, but these are models and as I said that in more stable population is one such model. Somebody observed long back that if you take a population with a, uh, any type of age distribution subject it to a constant schedule of fertility and mortality for sufficiently long period of time, then you find that after some time 
age distribution of this population becomes stationary means percentage of population at different ages becomes constant that age that limiting stationary age distribution can be called stable age distribution and that stable age distribution depends totally on schedules of fertility and mortality and ultimately on birth and death rates only not on the previous age distribution with which the population started this is stable stable population model now there are some other assumptions all models are based on certain assumptions and one assumption is that the population consists of one sex only you will ask how is it possible no human population can consist of one sex yes but it is an assumption all models are representations of reality with respect to one or two selective aspects so here we are assuming that the whole population consists of one sex another assumption that the population is close to migration that means there is neither any in migration nor any out migration or in case of international migration you can say there is no uh, immigration no emigration and a special case of this is stationary population stationary uh, stable populations with zero rate of growth are called stationary populations and they are of special interest to demographers in such types of stable population the number of persons at any age x as well as total population are fixed the number of births is same as the number of deaths and they are called stationary population people die at each age as per the given schedule of mortality there is no migration the whole population consists of one sex and deaths at any age are evenly distributed those of you who have ever seen a life table for some country somewhere uh, recently world health organization has prepared life tables for most countries of the world for which reliable data exist and you can see that life table it's interesting to see what life table shows that life table age distribution is the stationary model of population the much used life expectancy at birth comes from a stationary population model and that is one reason why for comparing health status of different countries we use life expectancy and not death rate because death rate depends on the age distribution of population life expectancy does not depend on the age distribution of population uh, the age distribution of population is itself itself generated by the uh, schedule of uh, mortality or a age specific death rates so uh, life expectancy is independent of age distribution and can be compared across populations varying in age distribution from uh, this kind of age distribution or stationary population also you can calculate death rate and those death rates can be compared as much as life expectancies for different countries there is a simple connection that life table death rate is just the inverse of life expectancy so for example if the expectancy at birth is 50 the crude death rate for that country would be 1 upon 50 or 0.02 or 20 per 1000 population if the life expectancy is 100 then uh, crude birth rate would be 1 upon 100 or 0.01 10 per 1000 you see today uh, most countries have crude death rate around 7 or 8 but their life expectancy varies from as low as 40 to as high as 80 the reason is that this uh, crude death rate being dependent on the age distribution cannot be compared but this life expectancy from 40 to 80 can be compared and you can actually calculate crude death rates corresponding to these life expectancies uh, by taking reverse of them so for life expectancy of 40 crude death rate would be 1 upon 40 or uh, 25 per 1000 for life expectancy of 80 it will be 1 upon 80 india's life expectancy is 64 so the life table death rate would be 15.6 means 1 upon 64 1 upon 64 multiplied by 1000 uh, if we express crude death rate in per 1000 terms and that comes out to be 15.6 so uh, this 15.6 
is the life table death rate. Actual death, death rate of India is around 8. See the difference. Actual death rate of India is 8. Life table or stationary death rate would be 15.6. The difference is that this uh, crude death rate of India around 8 uh, shows the experience of two things the present age distribution of population which is quite young and the age specific death rates operating at different ages. While this life table death rate 15.6 would be the death rate of India which will result from the present age specific death rates and age distribution of life table population or stationary population which is itself generated from age specific death rates. So, life table, life table death rate is a function of only one thing age specific death rates set of age specific death rates or schedule of mortality while actual crude death rate is a function of two things uh, schedule of mortality and uh, the present age distribution. Life table uh, you know, uh, is therefore, uh, a better thing to compare health status of different countries or achievements in the field of health, family welfare, uh, gender, empowerment of women etcetera. Life table uh, or life expectancy corresponding to the death rate of eight, which is usually the death rate of different countries today would be 125. See the big gap. The most important of all the demographic models is therefore, the stable population model. It says that if individuals are born at a you can derive this mathematically that if individuals are born at a constant rate of one person per unit of time. It may be year, it may be month, day or something. So, one person per unit per year and the survival probability of a person is it x is p x then at any time the expected size of the population is given by expected value of x equal to integral 0 to alpha p t d t, where expected value of x refers to the expected size of population at age x, p t refers to chance of survival from birth to age t and alpha refers to upper limit of the age distribution. Empirically, you can find out what is that alpha beyond which nobody lives. In case of India say uh, alpha may be taken to be 90, 85 or 90. For some developed countries it can be taken as 95 or 100. So, this is the upper limit, upper possible. There is a difference between life expectancy and longevity. Life expectancy refers to uh, expected years. One is expected to live. A child who is born today, what will be his average age of death or at what age is that child expected to die that is life expectancy. So, a child born today in India is, a, is expected to live for 64 years our age specific death rates are such. Longevity means that this is the age beyond which uh, nobody survives. So, life expectancy is 64 longevity may be 85 or 90 beyond 85 or 90 nobody survives in India something it is an assumption. It may be noted that a stable population model is a deterministic model. We are not talking of probabilities, we are talking of a fixed relationship and population following the stable model always results in a population in which the proportion of persons at any age x does not change with time. Further, suppose the individuals are born at a constant rate rate other than 1 per per 1 uh, per uh, uh, unit of time, then the size of population at time t would be capital V t equal to b e raise power alpha t integral 0 to infinity e raise to power minus rho x. Now, a new term rho has appeared in this equation and p x d x. Here alpha and rho are two constants. In, in any model, there are certain constants. They, they are called parameters of the model. So, there are two constants alpha and rho. In the earlier case, uh, in this case there was there was only one parameter. Uh, here I wrote only one constant say alpha, but now you have two things you have alpha you have rho and it is written 0 to infinity. So, you have two constants alpha and rho these are these constants are called 
parameters of the model. This population grows or declines at rate rho. So, now you have a concept of growth rate of population also. Its age is stationary population has zero growth rate, but stable population can grow, can decline and in limiting case when the growth rate of a stable population is zero, it is called a stationary population. When it is stable population with rate of growth zero are called stationary population, that is the difference. That a stable population is more realistic that way, because the stable population can uh, expand, it can increase in size, it can decrease in size, it can uh, remain constant and that limiting case of a stable population in which growth rate of population is zero is called a stationary population. Its age distribution means age distribution of a stable population that the proportion surviving to age x is proportional to e raised power minus rho x p x. Now, using the property of a stable population that age distribution of two stable population never cross each other, census growth rate and proportion of population up to a certain age uh, normally 35 years were used to estimate birth and death rates for those populations which lack reliable growth rate of population is 0 is called stationary population. Its age distribution means age distribution of a stable population that the proportion surviving to age x is proportional to e raised power minus rho x p x. Now, using the property of a stable population that age distribution of two stable population never cross each other, census growth rate and proportion of population up to a certain age and normally 35 years were used to estimate birth and death rates for those populations which lacked reliable and complete data on them. I know that is for students of sociology who do not have background of mathematics, it may be difficult to follow all these formulae. There are only three lectures anyway devoted to modeling and you have to bear with me. Um, what you can understand from this modeling or from this lecture is that one that models are about relationships either mathematical or statistical between certain aspects of demographic reality. This, these aspects may relate to processes or these aspects may relate to composition or structure. They may relate one aspect of uh, composition to one aspect of uh, processes. Like here, one aspect of composition means age distribution is being related to growth rate of population. And once you have such kinds of relationships, uh, here I mentioned one example of how these models were used. Uh, in 50s and 60s, for less developed countries, we did not have reliable data on birth and death rates. But for most countries, we had some figure of growth rate. We also had some idea of age distribution of these populations. And using uh, a stable population theory or stable population model and these two things, either growth rate or uh, proportion of population below 35 or above 35 or both uh, age distribution and growth rate, demographers estimated birth and death rates for various countries which were found to be quite acceptable by the planners and demographer. Problem in this is, uh, as we move from simple to complex, I said that uh, when assumptions are simple or you are showing depicting only one aspect of reality, you have simple model. Uh, when you have more things to represent, then you have uh, complex model. Now, in a stable population, it was assumed that uh, schedules of fertility and mortality are constant and growth rates are 0 that model could easily be used for a large number of populations uh, up to 1950s. In less developed countries, there were many populations which were not growing at all and in which birth and death rates were constant. So, a stable population model was of substantial help. Gradually, uh, in 60s, 70s and for many countries in 50s itself, their death rates started falling. So, this assumption of constancy of fertility and mortality schedules was violated. Now, you had a situation in which fertility schedule was fixed, but uh, mortality was declining or mortality was improving, life expectancy was uh, going up and crude death rates were declining. So, the assumption of a stable population model were violated. In that situation, a relatively more complex model which was called 
quasi stable population was developed in which one aspect of population processes fertility is constant and mortality is changing. So, uh, for application to less developed countries population in 70s and 80s, uh, quasi stable population model became more useful and uh, it was more widely used than the stable population model that could be used for populations up to 40s or 50s. Now, it is clear that none of the world population remained stable after second world war, but with suitable modification in the mortality component the model could safely be applied to these populations. The stable population model with this modification was called quasi stable population model. Development of model populations showing probability of surviving from birth to different ages at different levels of life expectancy for different regions of the world helped the demographers working on the populations of developing countries immensely for estimation of rates, for population projections, for planning purposes and for variety of other purposes. This shows the importance of modeling. Now, the issues of modeling in demography are the major issues in population studies are as follows. Growth of population. Can we describe growth of population in general in terms of a mathematical model or growth curve? changes in composition of population, age structure, marital status, occupational, economic and so on. Among them description of age composition of population is more sought after. Then demographic processes such as nuptiality or marriage, fertility, mortality and migration. You have less mo models for migration, more models for fertility and mortality. Mathematical and statistical models have been used in studies of all these issues. Among them as compared to nuptiality, more attention has been paid to modeling of fertility and mortality. Mathematical models have been used commonly to predict the size and composition of population of a country or a geographical region like population of India or population of different states of India. Uh, for this purpose various functions such as linear function, geometric exponential growth model, modified exponential function, logistic curve, Markham curve, Gompertz curve, polynomials, hyperbolic functions and auto regressive series have been used. I wish I had more time to devote to these things. This is something which interests me very much, but in this co basic course on population and society we are more to discuss social aspects of population and not the model. But those who are inter some of you who may be interested in modeling may uh, look for literature on all these things. These are growth curves. Among them logistic curve, I will just talk about logistic curve. Logistic curve has been found more useful, it has found more support than any other functional linear, geometric, exponential or GOM parts or polynomials as well as the logic, logic behind logistic curve that population increase is proportional to the absolute population size already attained and the amount is still left until the maximum where the population becomes stationary is achieved. You know the idea is if you take exponential model then the population starts from 0 and it uh, very soon it increases to a very high number and ultimately uh, moves towards infinity. Now, common sense says that no population can ever become infinity. Similarly, if you are to predict proportion population living in urban areas, you know that proportion cannot exceed 1 or 100 percent. But if you use polynomials, linear models and regress percentage urban on socioeconomic variables, then some of your predictions may be inaccurate or uh, unacceptable and they can go beyond 100 percent or the figure of 1, ratio of 1. In such cases also logistic model is found to be more useful. So, now let us look at the logistic model, some aspects of it and what ultimately it gives us. Assume that R is the maximum rate of increase of the population. What does maximum rate means? Maximum rate means that population rises at a slow rate, then its rate increases, but once a certain number is attained the rate of growth of population starts falling and let that be k minus n 
upon k the fraction the fractions by which the actual population n, n is the actual population means population at a given point of time below the maximum k population can go up to uh, size k and n is the size at a given point of time. Then the population per unit of time change in population per unit of time d n n for population t for time d n by d t is rate of growth a into n into k minus n upon k. Suppose you can make this assumption the rate of change d n by d t depends on rate of growth on actual population and on how far the actual population is from the limiting case k. It can be shown mathematically that under this assumption the curve that you get or the number in terms of in terms of time k etcetera follows the following logistic model n equal to k upon 1 plus b e raised power minus r t. So, it is an interesting uh, if I want to show this then this model would look like this t time on x axis n on y axis gradually we start with a small population and as time passes population is increasing, but increasing at a slower slower rate of growth in the beginning with time the rate of growth of population is increasing it may increase further. A time comes when rate of growth is start declining all the population is growing. So, population is growing rate of growth is falling and ultimately at some point of time when the size of population reaches k when n equal to k when the size of population reaches k then the population is stabilized. Now, this kind of you know this uh, growth curve uh, is very well depicted with the help of this model which is called logistic growth model and this logistic growth model has been found to be of immense help in forecasting of population of different countries. Growth rate of a population following logistic curve has a definite pattern rising from an extremely low level to a maximum level sometime and declining after that gradually reaching 0. Logistic model has also been found to be of immense use in predicting sub populations means urban and rural populations of different occupations proportion married by uh, by age populations in different industries like primary secondary tertiary as time passes proportion of population engaged in primary sector decreases proportion engaged in manufacturing activities increases for those proportions also logistic curve can be used for prediction. UN manual 8 showed that a constant urban rural growth difference uh, leads to logistic growth of the degree of urbanization. Means, if you can assume that both urban and rural populations are growing exponentially, but the difference in growth rates of urban and rural areas is constant means urban rural growth difference u r g d is constant then the proportion urban or percentage urban follows a logistic model which means in the beginning rising from an extremely low level to a maximum level let us say in the beginning when urbanization is low when uh, virtually the whole population is living in villages urbanization or percentage urban or proportion urban rises at a very slow pace, but as time passes pace of urbanization increases. A time comes when pace of urbanization reaches the maximum level for which we use the term r in logistic growth model. After that growth rate of urbanization starts falling and although percentage urban keeps on increasing, but growth rate of urban population growth rate of urbanization starts falling and ultimately at some level may be 70 percent or 80 percent or 90 percent or 95 percent urbanization gets stabilized. So, level of percentage urban will not go beyond that level. A URG the method was used for projections of ratio of urban population to total population and even other types of ratios such as ratios of cities to total urban population. I remember when this manual 8 was published I was a student of IAPS 
and in India we were the first forecast population of urban areas of Maharashtra and of different cities of Maharashtra uh, using this URGD model and these uh, projections were found to be quite useful by government of Maharashtra. Similarly, ratios of labor force to total population and school enrollment rate. School enrollment rate also follows the same model, primary school enrollment, secondary school enrollment, they all start from 0, they reach some maximum point. You can never, uh, you know, primary school enrollment can go from 0 to 100, secondary school enrollment rate can go from say 0 to 80. University enrollment rate will never reach 100, uh, it may go from 0 to 40, 50, maximum say 60 and uh, different logistic models can be used to forecast uh, enrollment rates for different countries at different stages of development. In a typical logistic growth model showing growth of population and increases continuously from 0 to uh, saturating level in a certain manner. Initially when n is small, growth rate is also small, it continues to increase, uh, this is what I have already stated. Now, logistic regression is a type of regression, this is another model. These days in sociology, you, you open any journal of sociology, particularly from Americas, American Journal of Sociology or American Sociological Review, you find that most articles are based on uh, analysis of empirical data and most articles are using logistic regression. There was a time say in 50s, 60s when sociologists uh, made use of regre multiple regression analysis as a model. Uh, today more sociologists are going for logistic regression. It is a type of regression model in which log of odds ratio of a binary qualitative dependent variable is expressed as a linear function of a number of qualitative as well as quantitative variable. So, here a dependent variable can be migrant, non-migrants, migration status whether somebody is migrant or non-migrant or somebody is going for sex determination test or not going for it and the independent variables are usual socio-economic variables. During last 50 years, logistic regression has completely replaced the simple multiple regression analysis in sociology. Then uh, models have been used in uh, estimation of mortality and fertility, uh, when we from census we had some data on average parity or average number of children born for different age groups starting from 15 to 19. This, uh, aver uh, this P2 average parity, uh, this uh, P2 was used for average parity of age group 20 to 25. 15 to 20 is first, second age group for reproduction is 20 to 25 and P2 refers to average, average parity of women in uh, 20 to 25. P3 refers to average parity of women in age group 25 to 30. Now, when we did not have reliable data on age specific fertility rates, models were used. This is another example of use of model that Cole and Damini suggested that you can use an approximate value of of total fertility rate like this, uh, square average number of children or average parity of women in 25 to 30 and divide it by average parity of women in 20 to 25. Why did P 3 square by P 2 resemble total fertility rate? This is a model and this model is developed on the basis of certain empirical and analytical understanding of relationship between total fertility rate and parity. Uh, Brass, another demographer showed that you get better estimates if in place of using your previous uh, function P 3 square by P 2, you go for uh, P 2 multiplied by P 2 multiplied by P 4 by P 3 raised to power 4. Here P 2 uh, refers to average parity in age group 20 to 25. P 3 is parity in age group 25 to 30 and P 4 is average parity in age group 30 to 35. So, depending on to which data, to data in which age group you, uh, you assign more importance, more reliable, you think that 15 to 20 is more reliable or 20 to 25 is more reliable 
uh, 25 to 30 or 30 to 35 uh, and depending on your empirical and analytical understanding of relationship between TFR, this is another estimate of TFR, then TFR can be estimated from the previous equation P 3 square by P 2 or from this equation the TFR equal to P 2 multiplied by P 4 by P 3 raised to power 4. With improvement in data sources and development of a new uh, of new sources such as sample registration scheme, uh, need for such models has declined. This is another example of uh, application of models in mortality. Here L x, small l x, this uh, in stationary population, this tells us exactly what number of people are surviving to age x. And this is uh, expressed b a constant raised to power x raised to power k. There are two parameters or constants in this model b and k. These b and k uh, are obtained, these parameters are obtained from empirical data. Uh, similarly, uh, Gompard's model has been uh, commonly applied for studying mortality and here survival functions are expressed in terms of age, age etc. at different points of time t. Those of you who come uh, from some mathematics background uh, may be interested in these things and those who do not have sufficient mathematics background to understand these things may ignore. Just try to understand that it is possible to connect different aspects of demographic processes and composition by using mathematical and statistical model. This is the only thing I wanted to convey in this class. The person who developed uh, this model, I showed the Gompard's model has been applied for studying mortality. Vion used a, this v model for mortality rate and uh, he assumed that typical human survival curve shows a rapid decrease in survival in the first few years of life and a relatively steady decrease and then an abrupt decrease near death. In absence of data on measures of fertility, they were derived from surveys. In India, demographers derived parity progression P, P, P1, P2, P3, P4 and uh, using the formula I have just now shown, uh, we estimated total fertility rate for India. So, like this uh, uh, you can, uh, it is possible, you know, everybody will not be interested in this, but uh, what I want to say that it is possible at least some is in some cases to build uh, relationships between different components of population, uh, growth rate, fertility rate, migration rate, uh, mortality rate, marriage, nuptiality or growth rate of population as in logistic curve and it is, uh, it is possible to uh, represent them with the help of growth models. It is also possible to develop mathematical equations showing one or more of these things on the left hand side of equation means uh, as dependent variable and socio-economic certain demographic variables themselves on the right hand side as independent variables. If you are using equations uh, derived uh, analytically uh, using mathematical formulae, mathematical theories, then you have mathematical model and if you are expressing behavior uh, of people in terms of probabilities or you are making use of probability density functions like uh, you, you may, some of you may be familiar with binomial probability function, Poisson function uh, or uh, normal distribution. If you are using such distributions to describe behavior of something like number of accidents at some crossroad per day, what is the number of accidents? And if you show number of accidents uh, using Poisson process, Poisson probability distribution e raised to power minus lambda, lambda raised to power x by factorial x, you are using a statistical or a stochastic model. We will talk about these models once more. In the next lecture, I will talk about migration model. I will talk about uh, the whole process involved in building models uh, and I will also raise a few issues uh, of modeling before demographers in our times. Thank you very much.